Thank God. Let's okay. Go for it. Um, <laughs> nice. Okay. Then hello everybody and thanks for joining our talk today. So I will give you now a very glimpse um, into this MASTG refactoring. So as Carlos was saying, we already did the refactoring of the MASDFs already while well back and um, have started already now for since last year to refactor further the MASTG. And as you can see here in the screenshot on the left side, this is from our website, the MAS .org. You could see there are four different categories and this is basically the main content also of the MASDG because it's broken down into tests, um, techniques, tools and apps and on the right side you can see an example how um, one of the tools like Frida might look like. And if we go to the next slide, you can see a little bit further how this whole architecture actually looks like. So you see on the left side the OWASP MASDS with the controls and of course with the control there needs to be tests to um, verify these controls and as you can see on the right side with the test um, this blue um, um, button here which is the MASTG here on the right side so for those of you that remember the MASTG in the past this was a huge test case this was one big text file and one of the goals of the refactoring was to encapsulate all of these different areas so you can see here the test is on its own, there are techniques, there are tools, there's of course in general knowledge and also the apps. And how this is structured now is that a test can basically link to a technique and in the technique there might be tools used so we can link to this. So this means um, a test can for example do um, um, a dynamic test then it's explained how a dynamic test can be executed in a specific scenario. And then there might be a tool like ADB that we are using to analyze log files, for example. And this would also be um, explained in the tool section. So this means it's further encapsulated and we can easily reuse and reference, therefore, to all the different tools and techniques. So the thing is, um, we have now the um, MAS controls on the left side, which are quite high level, the tests that are actually quite low level. And the thing is we needed to have something in between which we identified as the weaknesses because this is bridging a little bit between the gap between the control and the test. And this is still something that is always agnostic and this is something new that um, Carlos will also be sharing with you in a few minutes. If we go to the next slide, um, the MAS weaknesses. So this is an Excel sheet that we were working on already for a while. Um, on the left side, you can see this is basically now called um, the weaknesses that we have. In the past, we were referring to this as atomic tests. But this is the structure that we want to move forward with. And that is already publicly available. And this is defining the milestones for our MASTG refactoring and all the different kind of tests that we want to execute. Um, then over to you, Carlos. All right. So here comes a completely new thing. Uh, so weaknesses, that's a word that's probably familiar to you. And you have seen this thing. Who knows this? Okay. So um, this is very much used in the industry to reference weaknesses in software. And what if I tell you, just trying to explain what Sven said with the weaknesses, what if we do something like this. Now we will have all the weaknesses related to mobile security and we call this MASWE now. So now we have the MASVS. Yes, we changed the color to green. The MASDG on the other side and now the MASWE connecting everything together. So um, as you are going to see, uh, the, the new weaknesses are very pretty similar to the CWEs. That's very intentional. Um, as you will see in the structure. And this is great because now we can close this gap here and we, um, as you know, the controls on the MESVS, they are very, very high level. And now we can get more specific and then we can go to the tests to be even more specific. And there is one thing that is new, which are the demos. Uh, so we have, again, three new components. One is the weaknesses, the new tests in version two that will change from the ones that you already know. And these te tests will come with demos now. So this is more or less uh, how it looks like. You have an MASVS control 
that's, as you see here, is very high level. Just, okay, the app should employ current cryptography according to best practices, but what exactly? So now you have the weaknesses to describe that. And one is about pseudo-random uh, generation. So uh, you will have others like weak hashing algorithms, weak encryption algorithms, and everything that you can imagine. And then there is a question how to test for that. So we will have many tests for the same weakness, and then we will demonstrate those tests with actual examples. And th those examples, called demos, will contain actual code and test scripts and outputs and everything. So this is completely different from what we have now. If you go to the MSDG, which is extremely um, informational, and you can get a lot of information there and, and, and learn a lot, but you might find some code snippets, and you don't know if they're current, if they work. If not, you don't know anymore because they might be created once we started the project, 2020. Uh, sorry, 2017 or something like that. And now with this, this uh, makes all the difference because this is code that is working and is tested in our pipelines. So now Sven is going to tell us a bit more about these demos and our new apps. Exactly, thanks. So um, as Carlos was already saying, they had a lot of random um, snippets or still have a bit of random snippets in, in the um, MASTG. But we want, of course, the demos to be reliable and consistent. And we definitely want to make sure that all of these results are also reproducible and that they could properly be tested and validated. So if we have now for the tests, um, the snippets, meaning the code for an Android app, some Kotlin code for an iOS app, some Swift code, then um, we want that these snippets can be executed also and that um, the code can actually be embedded into apps. So what um, we have seen, well, what we can see here is that on the right side, there is um, an MAS app, and this is an iOS and an Android app that we have made available, and where the um, tests can also be used and embedded to. So if we go to the next slide, we really want um, that all the samples that are part of all the tests can even be tested in the future automatically. So at the moment, it should become mandatory that for every test, we have some sample code that can be tested that should be embedded into these sample apps. And moving forward, and again, this is just a draft concept, this is what we envision for the future, is that we're utilizing our existing GitHub actions so that um, even the APK, meaning the Android app or the IPA, the iOS app, is being built, then um, we can run, if it's a SARS test case, for example, some SEMGRAB rule against it. I mean, there might be some reverse engineering happening. There will be then the, the, uh, the rule applied. There will be some output, and then it will be compared to um, the actual output that we are expecting. So just to validate that everything is really going into the right, into the right direction. If you go to the next slide, you see we also would like to do this even um, for DAST. So this means same thing. We create the APK and IPA with the sample code out of the test cases with our iOS and Android dummy app. Then this should be installed into a virtualized device. Um, the DAST rule can be executed, which could be, for example, um, some some script that is utilizing Frida or Frida Trace. We generate some output out of this and validate it with the expected output. And then we can validate even across various Android or iOS versions, maybe even in the future, um, if specific tests are applicable or not, or not applicable, but if they are consistent and the output is consistent of these tests. Then um, over to you, Carlos. Yep. So we said SEMGRIP and, and, and um, for the devices. We have them outside, we will have some words with them in a minute. Um, so let's take a look at the beta. It's available here, so you'll have the slides, no worries, but if you want to already scan it and uh, take a look. Uh, it's uh, hidden in our website for these days until we made this, this announcement now, uh, but you can already take a look. So I'm going to uh, walk you through one of them, which is over here. So if you go to the website, you will see it in uh, yeah, probably today here, well, you will be able to click, but now you can just access the link. So this is one of those weaknesses that I presented before about insecure um, random generation. And you can see that it's 
pretty simple. It's meant to be simple and short and concise, but it should give you all the information you need, like an, a short overview and the impact and how this can happen. This is going to tell us how to test as well. So you will see that the tests are related to this mode of introduction. This is a term also for the CWEs, by the way. And then we have some mitigations. So, and then um, if we take a look here, we see that we have two tests. And one is for insecure random use, which is this thing here, and another is for non-random use. If we take a look at this one, this is one of the tests. So the test has a short overview and then has some steps. And you say, okay, this is so, it's just one step. Yeah. And this is because we explained before that now we have all these tools and techniques and now each of them has their own file. So you can actually navigate here to the technique and you will learn how to do this static analysis. So we don't have to explain static analysis and SEMgrep and these things again and again in the test. Now you can just link and go to those. And then this explains the observation. This is, okay, you run the static analysis tool. What should you expect? And in this case, it's the list of locations where these insecure APIs are used. And then finally, we have an evaluation and tells you when the test fails. Uh, this is huge because in the past, we haven't been done, uh, doing this consistently across the guide. Sometimes you will find something like this, sometimes not. But now there will be like, imagine uh, hundreds of tests all built the same way. And you can expect to have these things always. And you can expect to have demos. The demos are really cool because they come with code. You can copy the code. You know this code is working, so you can paste it in our apps. So the apps we presented is they are just like a like a placeholder, like a skeleton app. So you can paste anything that you find in the guide in those apps, run it in your Android Studio, and and test. Like you can validate the test. You can play around. You can take this code, modify it as as you want and try things out and learn. Then you have some steps. So these are the real steps. We're going to do static analysis, so we need some rules. In this case, we're using SEMgrep, and this is what we are looking for. And then we have a test script. And again, this is working. Uh, people is required to do all the steps, test it with Android Studio, get all the results. We have all the scripts in place to do this. Then you will get your output, and this is uh, pointing you to the weak uh, spots in this code. And then you have the evaluation explaining that. And this is for all of them. So you can see this. There is a new one on privacy here for sensitive data in network traffic. Also has a demo. In this case, we have this. Also, by the way, we have the reverse code because whenever we test something statically, uh, we use the reverse engineer uh, version of the code because that's how an attacker would do it, basically. Uh, you have the steps. In this case, uh, we are using the emulator and we are using the man-in-the-middle proxy. You have the code here. We, we have a script for man-in-the-middle proxy. Then we will run it, as you can see here. And then you can see what, what came out. So we got a request and a response, both containing sensitive data. And finally, real quick, I'll walk you through the last demo about the intro um, logging. Oh, sorry, this is the test. And then we have one demo. And the demo has also, we are logging a lot of things there. The steps is we are going to use Frida Trace, so dynamically we will hook certain functions of the app, as you can see there. And then we will get the outputs and take a look. And this is the output. So we can see that we are logging exactly the same things that we saw in the code. You can also take a look in Android Studio at LogCat. Those are the real logs from the app. And you can see that we are logging exactly the same things. So this is the output from Frida, Trace, and this is from the logs. And this is the evaluation, so the test fails. And I will see if you have some questions now. Sorry? Both. We're doing both, exactly. So you see here the apps that we developed. We have one for Android and one for iOS. So you can expect uh, the tests for, for both platforms and all tested. Are you working there in this 
DC, sorry? Oh, the weaknesses? Yeah, what was the question, sorry? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Similar to the CWEs, they will have IDs, and we're, we're getting IDs and aliases. So there will be many ways to reference to them, and they will be mapped to the MESVS, to the MESTG tests, everything is linked, and then we can map to the outside as well. Thank you. Any other questions? Oh, um, of course, there you have the CWEs for that. So, but in this case, we're focusing on mobile. So you will see, let's say, the version of random, insecure random for mobile here. And all the, you will see all the languages related to mobile in our weaknesses. And we will be linking to the CWEs because there might be also one, but that is more general. So this is going to be always mobile specific. Thank you. Um, so the uh, you taking CWEs that match the MSPS, but you're not necessarily getting all the CWEs that are mobile right? Oh no, the CWEs they are just a mapping for us. So we will just yeah, we didn't take. Let's clarify that we didn't take the CWEs and created something. No, we create all these um, weaknesses, the mobile weaknesses ourselves, our project, the community. Everyone is creating that. It's brand new. And then if there is a CWE, we will link to them or map. Sure. Automation. Yeah, so um, like this, or you mean... So this is where we're going to automate, like this is a very good example with dynamic analysis that you will have a virtual device. And this is the, these are the things that we will be doing in our pipelines, but you can then automate yourself the same way. So this is all being uh, public. You won't be able to access, of course, our virtual devices because OWASP or someone will have to pay for them, but <laughs> um, we will see. Another question? Yeah, so um, about the versions, of course, that's very important, very good point. Uh, yes, there will be, um, we'll be indicating which version is it is, and now it's much, much easier for us to update that, because we, we can keep track of all the versions, all the scripts that we have and uh, the versions, and then if someone sees that there is a new version and something is not working, they can open a GitHub issue, and then someone can fix it. And that's a huge improvement, because now, Someone reports some of the, the, um, the code blocks in the MASTG, but no one knows how it was created anymore. Um, they might be helpful still, but uh, now with this, we can really use our pipelines to check. Imagine there is a new version of uh, Android. We can configure the pipelines to run on that new version if see if something is failing. So you can rely that our tests and demos will be always up to date and working. More questions? Feedback? Presence? <laughs> Hi. Thank you. If you want some MAS stickers, come by, pick them, and I'll thank you very much for being here. And please contribute to the project. Here's our website. You can contact us, and uh, you can be part of it, any of you. If you can write, <laughs> uh, that's all we need. So please, thank you. <laughs>